Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to the New Life International Ministries, our Hour of Power Bible Study. I am the pastor, Overseer Eric Bell, and we're just so excited to be back on tonight to see each of you for another Bible study. I hope and pray that you're having a blessed week. Um, this has been a, a very good week, and I hope and pray that it's good for you. Again, I'm the pastor, Overseer Eric Bell. And this is New Life International Ministries, our hour of power Bible study. Hope and pray that all is well on your end. Uh, indeed, indeed. Thank God for each of you, you all that are coming in tonight. Again, hope and pray that you all are having a blessed day. Bless Elder, how you doing, Elder Sandra? Good to see you. Thank you for being on tonight. I thank God for you. Uh, all of our family and friends that are coming in, I thank God for each of you. I hope that you're having a blessed week. Uh, I am. Mean, everything's going pretty good. Elder Pat, how you doing? Let me tell you, Elder Pat, I'm still celebrating Sunday. You did such an awesome job this past Sunday. It blessed real good. I'm gonna tell you. Uh, I'm gonna tell. Hey, yeah, it's Sister Sandra. Hey, Elder Sean. Hey, hey, it's Sister Benjo. Uh, I'm gonna tell you, Elder Pat. Uh, Deep, he don't want to tell you, but he was very proud of you. He, I was messing with him, so we talked. <laughs> he was blushing. <laughs> I'm telling it all. He was blushing. <laughs> no, seriously, you did a great job. And I, I, I really do thank God for you, Elder, this past Sunday. Hey, Sister J, good to see you. All right, coming in. I'm coming in. Sister Elder, Elder Sandra, yes, it was. Elder Sandra, you know, Elder Sandra, I, you know, I told you what I'm used to calling you. But I I, I, I stay Elder Sandra for now. <laughs> Elder Duggar. <laughs> Elder Wood, how are you doing? Good to see you. Thank you for coming on tonight. Listen, you all, um, this this Sunday, I'm sorry, this Friday, we'll be on with Evangelist White. Uh, I'll be, hey, Sister Cormetris, how you doing? How you doing? All right. Um, we will be with Evangelist White. She has an awesome revival that is going on. I'll be climaxing this Thursday. I'm sorry, this Friday at uh, 8 30. I'll be posting the flyer. So get ready for that. To come on, tune. It's going to be virtual. So it's going to be great. It's going to be virtual. So I want you all to get ready to tune in. We're going to support Evangelist White in her spiritual revival. It's going to be great. This Friday, I'll be closing out for her. So we're looking forward to that. Hey, Sister Emma, how you doing? Good to see you tonight. Listen, I need everyone to do me a favor. Those of you all that are tuning in right now, um, that is in, go ahead. There you go, Elder Sean. You already got it. Share, share this Bible study and tag some people. Share this Bible study and tag. Let's get, let's get our numbers up. Let's get our family and friends in. Um, let's get them in. So go ahead, tag and share. Hey, Sister Shell, I'm so proud of you. Thank you for being on tonight. Um, go ahead and tag and share. Go ahead and tag and share. Tag and share. Uh, let's get uh, our New Life family and friends. Let's get them in tonight. Let's get them in because there is a man. There's a crazy word again tonight. Um, I'm telling you, there's a crazy, crazy word. The Lord has spoken again. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. Let's go ahead and get our numbers up. So I'm asking everyone that's on, if you will tag and share, tag and share. We see several of our New Life members that are not haven't come in yet. Sister Natalie, how you doing? Good evening. Good to see you. All right. Let's get our numbers up. Tag and share. Tag and share. Um, so about I've got about two more minutes, then we're going to go into our lesson. So again, this Friday, this Friday, this Friday, tune in. Uh, we will be, be with Evangelist Angela White. For her revival, it's going to be virtual. We'll be posting the flyer. So if you come back to this Facebook page, you'll get a chance to see it. You'll get a chance to see it. It's going to bless you real good. I promise you uh, it's going to bless you real good. Thank you all for tagging and sharing. Thank you all for tagging and sharing. I want everyone to tag and share for this Bible study. Again, I am Pastor Overseer Eric Bell, the Senior Pastor of New Life International Ministries. Our address is 1985 Vineville Avenue, right here in the Pleasant Hill community in Macon, Georgia. We're just up past Fountain Car Wash, right across from the Goodwill with the old, old Scottish Rite Shrine Bill. Sister Valine, thank you for being on tonight. Praise God for you. All right, all right. Yeah, tag and share. Everyone tag and share. Got about one more minute. Tag and share. Let's get our numbers up. Uh, family and friends, I promise you the word's going to bless you tonight. It's another, another rhema word the Lord has spoken. And it's going to bless you real good. 
tag and share, tag and share. Um, come on out this Sunday at 1015. I promise you the new life experience is, is, is none other. Uh, it's none. Hey, Sister Pam, good evening. Thank you for coming on tonight. It's like none other. I, every ministry have their anointing. And I praise God for every pastor. Every pastor that's been laboring, uh, laboring through even this pandemic. But uh, every ministry have their own different anointing uh, that God has given to them. And we have our own different. Amen. So I, I invite you all to come be with us every Sunday at 1015 a.m. Mask mandatory. Yes, mask mandatory. I was on a panel this past uh, Thursday uh, at uh, Morehouse School of Medicine with Dr. Uh, uh, Toomey and several other great uh, leaders in, in, the, in the United States are talking about this COVID-19, this new Delta variants, And so we want to make sure that we protect ourselves. So make sure that you mask up. Amen. Our, our, student, our kids are returning to school on next week. And we want to be praying for our frontline workers uh, and our teachers that are returning as well. Amen. Thank God. Thank you, Lady Bell. Good to see you on. Thank you. Amen as well. All right. So let's again... We're getting ready to get into our lesson tonight. I promise you this is going to bless you, this word tonight. Now, last week, um, we talked about, last week, uh, we talked about reflections. Reflections, as God said, what, what are you reflecting? And, you know, we, we've been on this for, for, for literally over a year now, uh, talking about revival. As God said that, um, that we have entered into revival. And we understand when we say revival, we're not talking about a church service, but a talking, we're talking about an outpouring of the spirit. Amen. God say that he's pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. Now, here's the thing about it. Now, what we have to understand um, in doing so, as God is pouring out his spirit, uh, the tone has been set. The platform is being set for miracle signs and wonders. Now, because the world's going, there's going, there's going to have to be something great and mighty that the world will see the difference that our God is real, that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is real, that we talk about this Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and all of that, and it's almost to a point where people don't believe, the world don't believe, because there's really nothing happening in their, in their eyesight. So the stage is being set, the stage is being set. For a, a, a mass outpouring, a manifestation of the power of God. We saw it last on the Azusa Street experience. We saw that um, years ago. And we're getting ready to experience that again on a much greater level. Where there would be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Now here's the thing. There is a reason for your warfare. Let me, let me I want y'all to catch this. There's a reason for your warfare. And the reason for your warfare is this. Hear me. As God is pouring out his spirit, guess how these miracle signs and wonders are going to manifest? It's going to manifest through us. God is going to use us as his vessels, his instrument to, to manifest his power similar to, hey, Sister Darlene, I was wondering where you were. Similar to in the Bible, when God used Moses, when God used Joshua, when God used Samson, when God used all these mighty men, the prophets, Samuel, and, and all of these great men and women, Deborah's great men and women of God, they were human beings. He used them, the Peters and, and the Pauls, and, and he used them, human beings, to manifest his power. And that's what we're about to embark on. So this is the reason for your warfare. So last week, you know, we've been dealing with, the Lord has really been dealing with, with us about our individuality when it comes to positioning ourselves to him. Because it's, a, it's very interesting. God said, I don't see you as man see you. Uh, I don't see you. And then somebody need to catch this because I'm already prophesying to, to uh, about 20 of you all already. I'm already prophesying to you. Uh, God does not see you as man see you. Are you hearing me? God does not see. And we ought to be glad that God does not see us as man see us. Because man looks at us through their own carnal eyes. God see us for who we are in the spirit. And all of us on here ought to be glad that God see us for who, how he see us and not for how man sees us. A uh, man looks at the outward appearance, but God said, I look at the heart. So as we are embarking upon this, it's, it's important. He said, reflection, what are you reflecting? And that is our posture that as we, every man works out his own soul salvation, that we have to be mindful of what we are reflecting. 
And this is why it is important for us to have our own personal relationship with God. Let me say it again. So that we will have our own personal relationship with God. Because that's important. I can't have a relationship with God based on my parents, based on my friends. We have to work out our own soul salvation and have our own personal relationship with God. In doing so, God does not deal with us all the same. See, that's the thing that, that, that we have to be very mindful and careful of. I don't know why I'm going here, but God does not deal with all of us the same way. When you look at God dealt with Moses one way, God dealt with Joshua a different way. God has a unique way of dealing with each of us individually as we are uh, glad to see my son on. Zach, good to see you, man, my son on tonight. As we, as God deal with us individually, this is how we develop our own personal relationship with him. Are you, are you hearing me? I'm glad God does not deal with me the same way he deals with someone else because the way that he may have to deal with someone else, what it takes for me, it may not take for you. Amen. So, so this is the portion of the Lord that I'm dealing with you all on this. So tonight, here it is, beloved. Here it is. Tonight, the Lord in my meditation, in my time of meditation, in preparing for Bible study, here it is. Tonight, we are going to deal with might. M-I-G-H-T. God said this is important. This will explain and bring clarity to many of us as to what we are in, in, in uh, enduring or uh, why certain things are happening in our lives. Uh, because God say, watch this, that we now, we, we've been praying for power, we've been praying for strength, but here's something that you rarely hear, um, that the Lord said, now I am, I am bestowing my might to you. We and that's something that we never really pray about. We don't pray about the might of God. We pray about power. We pray about strength. But God says there's a missing element that a lot of us are are, are are not aware of, and that how the enemy will defeat us in this area. And we're taught. And the Lord said, "Might God Almighty, M I G H T." The Lord said, "Watch this." I am bestowing you with my might. God, yeah, yeah. I feel the anointing already. Because when God began to deal with me on that, it brought understanding and clarity. Okay, God, I hear you. Now I'm understanding because might is important. As we are embarking on this revival that we were just talking about, he said that there must, we must have might. We've been focusing on power, and that's good. We've been focusing, Lord, I need strength. That's good. But God say, now you need my might. So what does the word, I say, now, now I, I want you, God, explain to me what is might. He said, well, now, in order to understand might, let me show you the difference between might, strength, and power. Because normally what we seek God on is for strength, and we seek God for his power, but not the might. So what does strength mean? Now watch this. Strength means the quality of being strong. Lord, strengthen me in this area. I need to be strengthened. I need strength in this, strength to do that. Strength is the quality of being strong. Lord, I need strength to overcome my job. I need strength, watch this, to deal with me. I need strength to deal with others. I need strength. And the Lord said, mm, I give you strength. So strength is the quality of being strong. Watch this. So what is power? Power is the ability which may come from physical strength or knowing certain information or having a personality that makes people follow you. Power. Power, the, uh, uh, the ability um, to do the, uh, the beyond. The ability that you knew you were not operating in your power. Amen. The, uh, the ability to do what you normally, you know you can't do. Uh huh. Strength is the, is the quality of being strong. Power, uh, uh, is the, 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 the fortitude or the force or the, I'm sorry, the ability which comes from physical strength. So we pray, God, give me power. Give me power, God. And the Lord said, okay, 
uh, uh, I would give you uh, the ability uh, that comes from the physical strength. What is might? Watch this. Might is the uncountable force. God. The uncountable force. In other words, uh, when I give you power, I got to give you force behind it. That's what might is. Because he said, when I give you power, I've got to give you an uncountable force behind the power. I give you strength and then I give you power. And on top of that, I give you force, which is might. That means I give you a, an uncountable force behind it. What's happening is now, the reason of your attack, watch this, your attack is, uh, is, is a, 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 a part of God's process of developing your might. His might through you. Because now you need force. <laughs> you have power, you have strength, but you don't have force. So God said, I am developing my might or my force to match your power. I'm matching, watch this, the power and strength that I've given to you with my might or my force. Because now, force is something that we really don't even, uh, uh, really haven't been focusing in on. But God Almighty, watch this, when you walk in force, when you walk in the might of God, uh, there is a, a like a tsunami a momentum of force that comes with it. When you walk in the might of God, watch this, this is when you can shift atmospheres just by showing up. Because the force, the might of God is on you. You have the power of God. You have the strength of God. Now you got the might, the force of God. God Almighty. Man, y'all better hear me. Y'all better hear me. I wish somebody would catch this and type this in. I am getting God's might. You are getting the might of God now. God said, I'm giving you a force. And what you don't understand, oh God. Oh man. You are about to be a force to reckon with. God, somebody better receive that word. You are, you don't understand what's being developed, what's being developed. Now, uh, watch this, around you, God Almighty, because the, the might of God happens around you. The power and strength of God happens in you, but the might of God happens around you, God Almighty. God said, what's happening now? Um, you are about to be a force to, reckon, to be reckoned with. <laughs> oh my God. You are about to be a force to be reckoned with. This is why now, what's happening now? God said, I am developing your might. I am developing my might for you to match your power and to match your strength. God, oh, you are about to be a force to be reckoned with. A force to be reckoned with. Oh God, the might of God. I need to listen about that because I feel the anointing. I feel good right there. When God said this, watch this. Oh, I'm developing my might in you. That means I'm, you're a force, God. Whoa. So when they see you, oh, beloved, when they see you, beloved, oh, they'll see the might of God. When, watch this. When Moses showed up to Pharaoh, he came. That's why God said, Moses said, who should I say I am? Who should I say sent me? And God said, I am that I am. In other words, watch this. The might of God is going with you. The might of I am. So when, when you show up, the might of God will be around you. And they will see you as a God. This is why when Moses stepped to Pharaoh, and the power and the might of God was on him. They saw him as a God. Man. Oh God. Let God do the transformation in you right now. Don't fight the process. Are you hearing me? Don't fight your development of might. God say, I am developing my might in you. You better hear me, beloved. That means your force. God say the force. Force. Uh, I just like uh, Star Wars. And the thing I liked about the Star Wars, they always would say, may the force be with you. In other words, may the might be with you. I come to tell somebody tonight, the might of God is being developed around you. God Almighty. God Almighty. The might of God. 
Whoo, my God, the force. Oh, here it is. Let me give you these revelatory niggas tonight. Let me give you these revelatory niggas. Somebody need to drop a seed on that already about the might of God, your might. So you want to know, why, why am I going through this? Why am I facing this on my job, Elder Sean? Why is this going on? Why? why? Let me tell you, Elder Sean, because God said, your might, I'm developing the might. My, the might of God is being developed. And watch this. The developmental process is different for everybody. God, y'all better hear me. The, the developmental process of might is different for everybody. <laughs> my development of the might of God is not the same as your development for the might of God, but the end results will be the same. <laughs> Let me get it real to you. Watch this. The Lord said this. You've been praying for strength and power, but you lack the might to handle it. <laughs> You've been praying for strength and power, but you lack the might to handle it. Watch this. Oh, God. The satanic realm recognize the power of God on you, but respond to the might of God around you. God Almighty. The satanic realm recognizes the power of God in you. But it responds to the might of God around you. That's why I say I give you power and might. God Almighty, y'all better hear me. Because the satanic realm recognizes the power of God in you. Oh, oh, oh. But it responds to the might of God around you. It sees the might. Okay, let me show you how that works. Job, God, Satan asked God, okay. Uh, God, what, you know, have you, have you sent my servant, Job, Satan said, yeah, I have, but you, you got a hedge around him. What does that hedge? The might of God. Because he understood that, watch this, when you have the might of God, Satan, no, I see you, but I can't touch you. Because you are enshrined with the might of God, and the might of God causes Satan to respond. <laughs> the power of God causes Satan to see you, but the might of God, the force that comes around with it disrupts things. The force that comes around it, the force of the power of God, it, oh God, y'all better hear me. Uh, he said, you've been praying for strength and power, but you lack the might to handle it. So he said, I'm developing the might of God. I'm developing the might, the force. Because there must be an equal force to the power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Watch this. Now, now, this messed me up, beloved. He said this. I'm releasing a might or force for your mind. Mm, my God. Let me say that again. God said, I must release might for your mind. There's got to be a force greater than your natural thinking, greater than your natural comprehension. I said, when I release my might around you, everything about you, your sight must see through the might of God. God your senses must sense through the might of God. Are you hearing me? Through the force of God. He said it so. I've got to, I'm releasing a might for your mind. Because your mind is, is really, uh, uh, it, your mind will tell you you're going to fail. Your mind is telling you it's not going to happen. Your mind will tell you all of these other things. And God said, I've got to release a might for your mind. <laughs> Woo, God. Yeah, we, ain't been, we haven't been taught about the might of God. The might of God. Now watch this. Let me show you something else about the might of God. As we're talking about might. <sighs> Operating. And this is where a lot of us have been. Because we've been strictly focusing on the power of God. God, your power and your strength. Let me show you what's been happening. Operating. Without the might of God causes spiritual ADD and hyperness. <laughs> he said, because you, 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 couldn't, you can't be still. Lord, I got the power.
power. I got the power. I got the strength. But now I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. He said, operating without the might causes spiritual ADD. You can't be, your attention span is short. Your attention span is, you hyper. Lord, I got to do this. I got to do that. No, it's because, watch this. You've been operating in the power, in the strength, but not the might. And just operating in the power, in the strength, without the might, has been, oh God, you, we've been just like this, just like this, just like this. Because we have, we don't have the might, the force, to match the power and the strength. So it's just like, uh, uh, let me see, how can I explain it to you? It's just like having a, 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 a raw power without, watch this, without the proper uh, 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 tool or, 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 or tool to, to contain it. Just raw power. He said, this why you must have the force that goes with the power. Because if not, it'll just go everywhere. And you won't get the effect that you're looking for. Why? Because you don't have the force that comes with it. Now he said this very interesting. The might of God requires wisdom. You must be workable and be a waiter. <laughs> the might of God requires wisdom. You must be workable. In other words, you must be workable. I, you know, you don't want to do nothing. You just want to do what you want to do, and all that you you know you 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 are not flexible. You just you're hard to work with. You just you just running, just just doing whatever. He said, no, the might of God, the force. Because if you use this force the wrong way, if you use the force the wrong way, it can cause terrible, catastrophic damage. Mm-hmm. It will cause catastrophic, catastrophic damage. If you use might incorrectly, it can cause catastrophic damage. Because we're talking about the force of God. I'm going to show you in the scripture. He said it requires wisdom. You got to be workable. And you must be a waiter. Two perspectives of being a waiter. The ability to wait and the ability to serve wait. <laughs> Many people, they got the power and the strength, but they don't have the might because they can't wait. They're not serving. They're not willing to, they just, they want to go do it right now. I got to do it right now. I got to do it. No, the Lord said, watch this. You got to wait for the total development of my might to match the power. Mm-hmm. You got to be workable. You got to be flexible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here's another revelatory nugget. Might, God, won't just give you victories. It gives you victories that will be talked about from time to come, for years on. So listen, let me say what might does. With power. When you get the might of God on top of the power and strength, might won't just give you victories. It'll give you victories that'll be talked about. What am I saying? Uh, the walls of Jericho are still talked about because when the walls of Jericho came down, they just didn't fall down. They fall. They they fail with the with force. So this move of God, as God is using you, you just won't have victories. But when people see you with these victories, they're gonna be like, "Wow! Did you see the force that came with it? The might is gonna these victories now is gonna cause you to be talked about." God. <laughs> because the force will be behind the power. So you just won't have a, a plain victory. No, you'll have a victory that people are going to talk about because they'll see the might of God. Oh, man, I hope I'm helping somebody tonight. Oh, I come to tell somebody, watch this, watch this. Oh, God, he just gave me. Let me prophesy this to you. Let me release this to you. Get ready for victories that's going to be talked about. God, I just said something to somebody then. Get ready for victories that's going to be talked about. Because it's going to, this victory is going to have the might. It's going to have force behind it. The walls that's not going to fall down. But the walls are going to fall down with intensity. With force. That's what's going to happen. Watch this. This victory is going to be one that has great force. That's going to have the might of God. And it's going to get everybody's attention. As a matter of fact, thank the Holy Ghost. 
The Lord said, watch this, I'm already setting the stage for people to have their eye on you. People are already, they think they're watching you for something adverse. They think that they're watching you for something bad. But God said, I'm setting it up so that they'll see the victory that's going to come through the might of God. That's going to be talked about all over in your family from general. Look at, look at all the victories in the Bible that we're still talking about right now because it was through the might of God. Tell folks, listen, I need for y'all to type this in. Keep on watching. I just said something there. Keep on watching. I need for y'all to type that in. Keep on watching because you're about to see something that you really going to talk about. The might of God. Oh, God. Woo, keep on watching, keep on watching, keep on watching, beloved, keep on watching, Be, tell them, tell them, type that in, keep, keep on watching, because there's about to be a victory that people are going to talk about for, uh, for years to come, oh God, oh God, mm. oh God, mm. <laughs> Woo. Here's something else. Oh God, are y'all ready for this one? Are y'all ready, Sister Lashonda? Are you ready for this nugget right here? Ever pitch, here it is. He said this as we talk about might. God Almighty, get ready for crazy intensity. God Almighty, he said, Tell my people. He said, first let me tell you, son. Get ready. Shall get ready for crazy intensity. God, you better get ready for crazy intensity. Crazy force. Going to be like, what in the world? Man, you might walk outside. Hmm, and the wind may start blowing because of the intensity behind this. Uh, it, the intensity that makes the foundation of the earth crack. Oh God, I feel the Lord thing. It's already seeping through me. Oh, y'all better hear me. D, he said, get ready, God. Ah, uh, the oil is dripping. The oil, the oil, God. Thank God for the oil. The oil is dripping. He said, get ready for crazy intensity. Get ready for crazy intensity. The, the oil is already dripping. The oil is running. And he said, get ready. I come and tell somebody, Get ready for crazy intensity. God. Oh my God. He said this. Because I'm, my might. The might of God is being developed in you. Oh the might of God is being developed in you. He said get ready for crazy intensity. And with this crazy intensity. Oh God. Oh. Here's this next revelatory nugget. God. Before we go into Logos. As he said, get ready for crazy intensity. Let me show you how big, how it is. Are you ready for this one? With crazy intensity, they may be bigger than you, but they won't have your might. <laughs> he gave me an example of David and Goliath. Goliath was bigger than David, but David had might. <laughs> he said, they may be bigger than you, but they won't, they won't have your might. The might that I'm giving to you. The force that I'm giving to you. Watch this. Crazy intensity. They may be bigger than you. Your Goliaths may be bigger than you. But your Goliaths don't have the might that you have. Woo. And watch. Let me show you how it works. God Almighty. Goliath had a sword. And a, 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 a crazy sword. <laughs> But David only had a rock. But my God, when the might of God connects with your rock, God said, I'm connecting might with your rocks. <laughs> when the might of God connects with your rock in your sling, watch this, where he is bigger than you, where his weapons is actually bigger than yours, but he don't have the might that you have. And the Bible says that when David swung <laughs> and he released the rock, the might of God caused the rock to penetrate into the head. Uh, oh God, if you understood the force and the intensity that was connected with the rock in the sling, 
<laughs> oh, I didn't mean to get into preach mode, but I got to release this to you. The Lord said, they may be bigger than you, but they won't have the might that he's giving you. Goliath was bigger than David. But Goliath did not have the might that David had. Might, and to this day, we're still talking about that victory. That's how your victory is about to be. God Almighty. It's going to look like it's bigger than you. And it is going to be bigger than you. But the might of God is going to show up. God. And the might of God is going to cause people to talk about that victory. Somebody on here right now. You may be dealing with COVID. You may be dealing with cancer. You may be dealing with a, 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 some type of illness. The Lord said, the, my might is bigger than the illness. Come. My might is bigger than the cancer. My might is bigger than the COVID. He said, you're about to experience the might of God. Whew. Man, y'all better catch that. I need for somebody to type this in. I need for everybody on here to type this in. Crazy intensity. Crazy intensity. Yeah. Crazy intensity. Crazy intensity. Crazy force. The might of God. Force. Crazy. Uncountable force. He said uncountable force. <laughs> crazy. Crazy. Crazy intensity. Crazy intensity. Now here's my final, final revelatory nugget. He said this. <laughs> now this going to help you. We talked about crazy intensity. We talk about they may be bigger, but they won't have your might. Watch this. What you experience, it says the Lord. Warfare that matches your might. You are experiencing the warfare that matches your might. Crazy warfare, crazy might. <laughs> Why some folks ain't going through nothing? Why some people are not facing anything? Because they don't have the might that you have. God Almighty. Oh, crazy. He said, there's the warfare that's matching your might. This warfare... Are you hearing me, Elder Sean? I told you it's going to be good for you. This warfare is matching the might that God is releasing on you. Mm -hmm. This is why it's so strong. It's strong because you have strong might. The warfare, your warfare is matching the might that has been released and developed on you. <laughs> Watch this. Now let's go on the Logos. Let's go on the Logos. Let's go on the Logos. Let's go into the written word. Here it is, beloved. Here it is. Let's go 2 Samuel 7 and 22. We're talking about the might of God, the force. We, we know about the power. We know about strength, but we don't know about the might. And that's the missing, that's been the missing element. The might of God. We got the power of God. We got the strength, but we have not been taught about the might of God. Here it is. 2 Samuel 7 and 22. This is our first scripture. Therefore, you are great, O Lord God. For there, this is now, now as we're talking about these scriptures, the context is in the area to, in the area of the might of God, the force of God. Therefore, you are great, O Lord God. For there is none like you. And there is no God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. Look at that type of might. The, the might of God, in other words, is saying this. There is nothing that is equivalent to the force that's being released to you. There is no equivalence of the force that is being released that comes with the might of God. There's, Satan can't compare to the intensity of God. Satan cannot to compare to the might, the force of God. Let's take it even further. Let's go to Psalms 65 and 6. 
Psalm 65 and 6. The one who by his strength established the mountains. Watch this. Being girded with might. <laughs> might is separate from power and strength. Being girded with might. Let me read it again. The one who by his strength, we talk about that, established the mountains. But you're girded with his might. <laughs> Let's go even further. Stay in Psalm, jump over one chapter. 66, Psalm 66 and 7. Who rules by his might forever? Whose eyes keep watch on the nations? Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Selah. Let me read it again. Who rules by his might forever. By his might. That's separate than his power and his strength. His might. God, God we, uh, man, I thank you. I thank you, God, for how you're bringing us into a level of understanding about your might. How you're equipping us with your might. How your might is being released to, to around us. Our power is in us. Our strength and power, your strength and power is in us. But your, your might is around us. God, you better hear me. You better hear me. The oil is dripping. I'm oily. The oil is dripping. The oil is dripping tonight. Oh God, here it is. Let's go Psalms 95 and 3. Psalms 95 and 3. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. That's the we, we remember in context, we're talking about the might of God, the force of God. So let's say it like this: For the force of God is great, and a great force above all other gods. Forces of God. Little G. Let me read it again in context. For the force of God is great. And a great force above all others. There is no force. There is no might that can, that can stand with it. For the might of God is great. And a great might above all others. <laughs> there is no might greater than the might of God. Whew, my God. Let's stay in Psalms 145 and 3. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. Let me bring to perspective. The might of God is great. The might of God will be praised. <laughs> And the might is unsearchable. <laughs> oh God. The might of God is great. The might of God will be praised. And his might is unsearchable. Do you remember I said? He said that there's in reverence in our nuggets that this victory is going to be talked about. The might will be praised. People are going to talk about, my God, did you see? Did you hear about that? It, the might of God. <laughs> Let's go. Psalms 147, verses 4 and 5. Psalms 147, verse 4 and 5. He determines the numbers of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our God. And abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. Now let's bring it into context. The might of God. <laughs> the even determines the number of stars. His might. Gives them names. So the might of God. Is setting the stars in place. And naming them. The might of God is great. The might of God is abundant in power. The might of God is beyond understanding. <sighs> Y'all better hear me. 
Let's go. Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 4. The oil is dripping. <laughs> Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord God is an everlasting rock. Let's bring it into context. The might of God, trust it forever. For the might of God is an everlasting rock. Man, y'all better hear this tonight. We're talking about the might of God, the force. The force of God is everlasting, like an everlasting rock. The force of God, the might of God is forever. It's forever. It's forever. It's forever. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But the word of God, the might of God is forever. <laughs> let's go. Let's stay in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40. Verses 28 through 31. Isaiah chapter 40. Verses 28 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary. And young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. And they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. He said that, listen, when you have no, when you run out of might, you got the power. But he said, I'm going to give you might, uh, and with the might, it, it will increase you. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm trying to help you all tonight. To talking about the might of God, might. Let's go in further. Jeremiah 10 and 6. Listen at this, beloved. There is none like you, O oh Lord. You are great. And your name is great in might. <laughs> there is none like you. Oh Lord. You are great. And your name. Is great in force. In might. Why do you think in the Bible. Notice what they say. We come to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We come to you in the Old Testament. In the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because that was the might. We do it in the New Testament. We say it in the name of Jesus. That is the might. The force. <laughs> the fo That force. Watch this. That force caused Jesus to get up out of the grave. Why do you think when he got up, he said, now I have all power. In other words, I now have might. <laughs> oh, God. Y'all better hear me. He took the keys. Now, he said, I got all power. I have might. I have power. And I have strength. I have the force. <laughs> God Jeremiah 20 and 11 Jeremiah chapter 20 Listen y'all better drop some seeds on this New life members y'all know Y'all know what you're supposed to do I've taught you when nuggets come When you get revelational knowledge like this You drop a seed Nobody's trying to get nothing from you When, when <laughs> New life y'all know Drop a seed Watch this Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 11. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. <laughs> Therefore, my prosecutors will stumble. 
They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. This was in the context of when we have the might of God around us, the force of God. He said, "You, the, the, but the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Dread means, I don't, oh God, uh-uh. The might of God, the force of God is around them. I ain't fooling with them. Mm -mm. I ain't messing with them. Uh -uh. mm -mm. Why do you think, okay, let, let me go again. Let's take you back into scripture. In the Old Testament, why do you think the Philistines, who were a known enemy of the children of Israel, there were times when they were like, oh, we ain't fooling with the children of Israel because we just saw the might of God, the force of God manifest. Oh, we, we, we ain't messing with them. Mm. Get ready for folks to leave you alone. Oh, I just said a word, did I just said a word. I just said a word. Because they're going to see the might of God around you. The force of that. Like, no, I ain't messing with. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. Because the might of God will manifest around you. Let's go even further. Jeremiah 32 and 27. Behold, I am the Lord. The God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? Behold. I am the Lord, and my might is on all flesh. Is anything through my might too hard? No. My might, the might of God, the force of God, nothing is too hard. Nothing. Nothing can overtake you. Nothing can be. This is why God said, I've got to develop you, your might. Your might to match the power. Your might to match the power. You got power. You got strength. But watch this. You don't have the might to handle it. <laughs> so I got to give you the force. I got to give you the, the force, the might, the intensity to match the power that is in you. The power is in you. The might is around you. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Here it is. Oh God. Luke chapter 11, verse 20. Luke chapter 11, verse 20. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. But if it was by the finger of his might, that I cast out demons. Then the might of God is come upon you. <laughs> Many of us have not been taught about the might of God. He said this in context. But if it is by the might of God that I cast out demons. Then watch this. The might of God has come Upon you. <sighs> Ephesians chapter 1. Verses 19 through 21. Ephesians chapter 1. God. Verses 19 through 21. And what is. The immeasurable greatness of his power. Towards us who believe. According to the working of his great might. <laughs> Let me say it again. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who we believe, who believes? According, this is why he said, I got to get the might. I got to get your might up. According to the working of his great might. This is why he said, now I've got to deal with you in the area of my might. Because, let me read it again. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe? Here it is. According to the working of his great might. That he worked, watch this, in Christ when he raised him from the dead 
and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule, hear this, this is what might, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. This is why he said, I am developing my might around you. According to the working of his great might. This great might is what worked in Christ when he was raised from the dead. <laughs> Beloved, I hope I'm helping y'all tonight. I hope I just, uh, the, through the Holy Spirit, that some revelation has opened. You know what, overseer, I never saw it from that. that that's why Rama is so important. This is why you must, listen, listen, beloved. This is why rhema is important. This is the importance of being able to labor for God and hear what he needs to speak to his people. This is why we as pastors, we as, as, as um, his mouthpiece, we must labor for him to hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Because you are the church and you need to hear what the Spirit is saying. Now, does that mean you don't hear? No, that's not what I'm saying. But on a whole nother a dimension, in a whole nother way, in a whole nother revelation. This is, the enemy don't want you to know this. This is why as leaders, as pastors, it doesn't matter what you have going on. That we have to, I have to stay before God to hear what the Spirit is saying to release to you. Because you got to have this rhema, you must hear what the spirit is saying. The mouth, what is God saying to you, the church? Man, I'm trying to help y'all tonight. I'm trying to help y'all. I'm trying to help you. Listen, Ephesians 6 and 10. Hear this. You've read this scripture before, but you never caught it like this. Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. <laughs> his intensity, his force. Finally, read it again. Finally. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. <laughs> final scripture, beloved, final scripture. Colossians chapter 1 verse 11. Colossians 1 and 11. <laughs> May you be strengthened. With all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy. <laughs> oh, beloved, let me give it to you again. May you, this is my last scripture, may you be strengthened with all power, according to to, this is why he said, I got to develop the might, my force around you, according to his glorious might. Watch this. When you get the might for all endurance and patience with joy, you can't endure and you don't have patience because we don't, our might has not been developed. Well, beloved, I hope and pray that this word blessed you tonight. <laughs> I, I'm oily. I'm, I, I hope and pray that this word blessed you tonight. Listen, listen to me. Listen. Uh, so a twenty dollars seed, new life. We know this is what we do. We sow nothing less than a twenty dollars seed. When Raymond comes, people of God, you see it sometime on TV, and people are like, oh, they just ran throwing money up there. No, 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 no. When Something is hits your spirit. 
revelation knowledge, you got to learn to respond because at that moment is when it's just like uh, when there's only a, a certain time that a woman can get pregnant during an ovulation period. That is the most sensitive time. Watch this to drop a seed to impregnate for a manifestation. Catch this. If something hit you tonight and you're like, wow, my eyes were open. That's when, watch this, that is the time that you drop a seed, people. You'll see the cash out there. I know I'm not trying to get nothing from you. I'm trying to get something to you. Listen, don't forget this Friday. Tune in and we will get, I'll send, I'll post the flyer. I'll post the flyer right here on the same page. I will be closing out revival this Friday at 8.30 p.m. for Evangelist White. She's been running a 31-day revival. We'll be closing it out. There is another word that will be coming this Friday. And I'll post a flyer on uh, this page. If somebody on here you're not saved and you want to be saved tonight, simple. Just repeat after me. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. And I believe in my heart that Jesus was raised from the dead for me. According to that, you're saved. But it don't stop there. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I pray that you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost that was given on the day of Pentecost. I pray now that you just receive that gift. Finally, listen, you need a home. You need covering. You've been out there without covering. You need covering. I'm telling you, you need a shepherd. You need a pastor. You need covering. If the Lord has spoken to you, we receive you. We have our Life Connect partnership. Only thing you have to do is just type in right now on screen, I want to connect. Or send a message. Inbox the message. Use Messenger to inbox this page. I want to connect. And our elder, myself, or the elder of, new, of our new members ministry, we will be in contact with you. But you need covering. It's time out for you just being out there, just, just wondering. Going here and there. No, the problem is you're going so many different places, eating so much stuff, you got spiritual indigestion now. You need a pastor. You need a home. If the Lord has spoken to you, just type that in. Listen, come be with us this Sunday at 1015. Our address is 1985 Vineville Avenue. That's New Life International Ministries. I'm the pastor overseer Eric Bell. I look forward to seeing you all this Friday night. And then uh, come back for another awesome experience this Sunday at New Life. Because we know here at New Life, it's not just church. It's an experience. Thank you for tuning in. Shine bright up all night. We're never slowing down Fall in love, drunk mistakes We're bound to hit the ground Gotta keep this feeling Keep on breathing Even if we're slipping away So I close my eyes and lose my soccer Do it like it's only a day We got a party for a lifetime Keep it